Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Unlocking the Magic. This is show number 170, and I'm super excited, as usual, <laughs> because today we have a special unlocking episode. I love these unlocking episodes. I do, too. I, you know what? I love these unlocking episodes for what? That when we go back, I always find things that when we do these shows that I didn't know, and it makes me want to go back again and experience, whether it be an attraction or a resort, uh, the things that we find researching these and go experiencing them in real life. And that's the point of the show. I was just telling Bruce right before we went live how I wanted to include in the intro kind of like what we do here because really that is exactly what you described on these unlocking episodes especially. What I want to give to you guys. A little history, just a little, a little information and some magic wherever you are and just to when your next vacation you can really slow down and appreciate the little things. What do we do here? I'm not sure, but I think that was that did that That sounded good. Oh, okay. <laughs> so on today's show, we are going to unlock the most iconic, in my opinion, the most iconic Walt Disney World Resort Hotel, Disney's contemporary resort. I have to say this resort has grown on me over the last few years. It's it's the resort you think of. At least to me, when I think of Walt Disney World or the Magic Kingdom or the Monorail, I think of the Contemporary Resort. Why is it just growing on you now then? Because we visited a lot in the last <laughs> few few times, and I always thought it was kind of plain, right? Did it's, you hear the tone in my voice? I'm like really defensive. I know you are defensive. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. You but were it seemed, saying it seemed kind of plain when you went there. Okay. And it didn't seem like a resort that was that exciting. But after strolling the grounds and eating there and hanging out, watching the fireworks, you know, visiting the Monorail. Hanging out by the pool, not swimming, <laughs> but just hanging out. It's grown on me, and I love the contrast of the front and the back of the resort. We'll get into that later. Well, I'm excited that it's grown on you. I'm, I'm, I, I, I appreciate your feedback here. I just feel very well. Connected. Thanks for that. <laughs> I just feel really connected to this resort. I truly feel like a kid again, and just something happens. When I when I'm when I'm there, I just feel young and that incredible. You can almost feel that incredible magic and that that it's if you, it's almost like a time machine. Like you can almost feel Walt Disney himself. I know that he wasn't part of it when I mean I know it, when it opened. Obviously, he had passed, but I tr feel his vision when I'm in this resort. You feel like when he thought of Epcot, this was going to kind of be part of that. Yes, exactly. I got that. Okay. I'm so excited. I can't even. I know. Your happens. yes was really loud there. <laughs> you know what happens with these too? I get so excited that I almost get tongue-tied because I, I, my brain works faster than my mouth. So, yeah, I have to work on that. <laughs> anyway, but you got you get me. I got what you meant. Okay. Hopefully you guys listening are get me too. Listen, I'm not that fast. So if <laughs> I got it, I'm pretty sure they got it. All right. So this, this hotel, it opened in 1971. It was... Many of you know one of the originals, the original resorts. And today we're just going to share some history, some – actually, I have some fun trivia, Bruce. I know. I thought you said that in the beginning when we're going to do some trivia on the show, which kind of scared me and made me excited <laughs> all at the same time. I'm going to go easy on you, just a few. The good thing is it's not live. So if I completely mess up and embarrass myself, I can go back and edit it. I'm not letting you do that. I know. <laughs> the one thing that I uh, – never mind. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and we're also going to talk about what you can expect when visiting today. Because I think that's important, too. I, I noticed that there are a lot of reviews of certain resorts, which is great. But I think in order to really appreciate which resort you want to immerse yourself in, I think it's important to know a little bit of the back history, a little bit of the story. I think that will help. I think with it, when I go to a new park, right, mm -hmm. like Pandora, I haven't watched any YouTube videos or anything about Pandora because I want to be completely surprised. It's the opposite when I think about resorts. I, I, I kind of want to know a little bit about the resort before we stay there You want because you're sleeping there, you're staying there. You want to know the history of why the resort is the way it is. So for me, I like doing those uh, videos about where you can see the resort and what happens. So I want to know a little bit about the history and a little bit about the present day. 
I have to say, though, that with researching and visiting contemporary, the Contemporary Resort, I must say that this one is the least heavily themed out of all the Disney resorts because that's important to me anyway. When someone emails us or messages us or asks our opinion of where to stay, um, you know, of course, you have to have a budget in mind, but even if it's something that you want to do later on and you have a goal of doing and staying at a deluxe resort, I honestly think the best way to choose is to really fall in love with the theming, the story of that resort because it goes all the way through. It's extended. So not only do they pick a st- so they pick a story of the resort and then that story continues on from the theming to the rooms to the decor in the lobby all the way down to the restaurants. So if you're not into, let's say, a Mexican theme, you're probably not going to have that much fun at the Coronado. <laughs> no. Because, you know. And by the, probably not, you won't. Right. I mean, the food is Mexican. Same same with, you know, uh, Port Orleans. You know, when you're there and you don't love jambalaya. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? That being said, yeah. Disney's a great place to experiment with that. No, I, I totally like, agree. It'd, be, it'd yeah. be worse if you didn't like Mexican stuff or like you weren't a big fan of Mexican food and you went to Mexico. That is good right? point. Yeah, at, at least in least... Disney, you can just like take get in the bus or your car and just Whatever. go to the next resort. Which many people don't know that actually. So that's a good point. You, they don't really realize that you can actually kind of bounce around. Yeah. Well, we, how do you think we know anything about the contemporary? <laughs> well, so Walt Disney World was undoubtedly the first destination resort in America, and the contemporary was the most unique hotels of its time and it's part of i said earlier part of the original resorts which were created based on walt's vision to provide hotels alongside the attractions which was smart because back then there was nothing really around there yeah and it really he basically because he really wanted to give you that immersive experience which is funny because the contemporary resorts kind of the only one you can see from inside of the magic kingdom Right. I know. I know. Yeah, we'll go into that, too. Oh, we are? <laughs> I mean, we are. When it was built, it was really considered a Florida icon. And I feel that, I don't know about you, but I really feel like the resort continues to stay true to its original vision. Like it's, it, it's one of those things where you could watch the monorail come out of the contemporary mm-hmm. over and over and over again. Oh, my goodness. It never gets old. It never gets old. Like, watching the monorail pull up to the transfer station isn't the same. Right. Like, I could very much forget that in a second. Yeah. And mostly I want to. <laughs> when it's crowded. But I know the you. monorail coming into or out of the contemporary is just awesome. It has that sort of retro futuristic theme that they were brilliant back then because it still remains timeless. It still has that feeling of future. And I don't know how inc- I don't know how they did that because things end up getting dated eventually. You know what we thought the future would look like. For instance, you know when you're in like the end of the Carousel of Progress. Exactly. I was just gonna say that last scene where you're kind of like, okay, this is what they thought it was gonna be like in the '80s. You know, whatever. Um, I mean, they were pretty close. They were pretty. It's just now it's way later. It's dated. Yeah. But for they were brilliant with this architecture that they did and the way the monorail goes through it continues to have that retro futuristic and somehow just remains timeless so i obviously i'm a big fan i can can go on and on what's your favorite way to access the contemporary so my favorite way has to be on the monorail i know i think if you stay at the contemporary you should park it like the floridian (laughs) and take the monorail over so, so have the Magical Express drop you off at, like, the Poly? Or... Yeah, and then take the monorail over. <laughs> like, that's how you should enter your vacation when you're staying at the Contemporary. It doesn't have the same feel when you park in the parking lot. It is a little bit – and I mean, the size of the building and the way that the rooms are the, – just the way that, that the building is shaped is dramatic. But you're right. Like, when you pull up, it's kind of like, oh. You know, when you walk into the – like first floor whatever. yeah like there's not too many resorts in walt disney yeah. World, but you walk into the lobby and you're like whoa whoa <laughs> but when you walk off of the monorail or you enter the contemporary from the monorail you're like whoa like this is awesome you're so, like whoa you're like whoa <laughs> at least i am i don't know what you are yeah no i totally totally agree with you and i like your advice there just hop off just don't just maybe go to the, the grand floridian or the poly <laughs> And then go to the contemporary. Because I do think that feeling, that futuristic feeling and that just sense of wonder happens 
when you go on the monorail. Yeah, it definitely. was intended for that. And and again, that goes back to the beginning when I was saying how this is the one resort that the theming wise, it's not over the top. It's it's very very simple. It's subtle, yeah. It's subtle, simple, modern, sleek. Kind of has that feeling of what you feel like when you go to almost like an airport. That's kind of at least when I was a kid, that's what I got. Well, isn't the mo- isn't the main lobby called the concourse? It is. Which is kind of similar to what the airports are called. You know, it's like a big open area. How'd you know that? I'm pretty smart. I'm impressed. I actually have it written down in front of me. <laughs> actually, when it was being, uh, when it was built and it was being um, advertised, the monorail that rode through, they, they said, this is phase one and just ahead directly through the center, you're going through the Grand Canyon concourse station featuring the largest ceramic mural ever created and they're talking about obviously mary blair's um mural and that is ginormous that is one ginormous when you stand at the bottom of that and look up it's amazing how big that actually is and hopefully you guys know who this is but she is a huge she was a huge influence with all things Disney, and she, most notably, she worked on It's a Small World and many other things. Walt Disney loved her, loved her artwork. And for whatever reason, I mean, you know, this was way back in time we're going, she still has that art, her artwork still is just so ahead of its time. And she has that unique style where you you recognize it if you saw it. She actually worked with Rolly. We talked about that with Rolly, our interview with Rolly Crump uh, on Small World. It's really cool to see her artwork in there, and it's really cool that it just, it goes, you know? Yes. She's got that futuristic flair, modern art flair. It even feels like it's in the one foot in the future, but one foot in the past. Exactly. It's incredible. I just think that just so incredibly talented, obviously. Um, what's really cool about, um, I actually have, I've, I've, I've listened to and watched a really cool clip uh, maybe we can somehow link it here, but it's Marty Sklar's description of the resort. Can I read it? Yeah, sure. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I know you love the reading, but this is Marty Sklar. Okay, I'll, I'll put up with it for Marty. <laughs> okay. The contemporary is very special because that term, contemporary, meant that we were trying to do something that represented a step into the future. We made a deal with U.S. Steel to actually build those hotel rooms off-site and put all the amenities into it from the bedding to the wallpaper, everything was put in those rooms off site, then trucked to Walt Disney World, lifted into place, and slid into the contemporary. That's cool. Like, I'm sure a lot of people know this already because it's pretty common, but they built the rooms complete off site and then they brought it to the structure and like slid them in like draws. This was revolutionary for a time. And, and, and Marty continues to say it was like putting a chest of drawers into framework. Um, but he also giggles in the last sentence. He says he kind of chuckles and says, but the problem they had was actually moving the rooms on the floor, Florida highways. Yes. And the, the timing, too. They didn't get them done really quickly. No. But, but yeah. It's amazing to think, though, that even when you think of Walt Disney film, right, when he comes to Walt Disney himself being ahead of his time when it comes to the way that he produced and created his films, like he even brought that to the resorts. They were always thinking ahead. They were always thinking ahead. Yeah. And so this was revolutionary. And actually, there's another, if you want, that we can um, definitely link that because it's a smaller clip. But it's a it's a vintage video, kind of like a commercial, of U.S. Steel Corporation. It's a promotional video describing their involvement with this project and why you should make this your next vacation. <laughs> it's That's really crazy. funny. It's cool. It's here. It, uh, they say, quote, when you – in when you and your family come visit Walt Disney World in Florida, come stay in this spectacular hotel. This is more than a hotel. It's a prototype of a whole new way to build, and we're involved. Did you ever stay there when you were little? No, and I was so bummed, but I always just dreamed. I could, I, I, I dreamed of staying there when I was little. I wish I did, but just seeing it when I was little, I have to say, is, is just as great. Did your parents bring you to visit there? Yes. We, w- we took the monorail actually from Magic Kingdom to Epcot, and it went through the contemporary. And as it was going through, I was thinking, what on earth? What is this? I like- picture – this is what I picture. <laughs> you're going through the mo- – you're like coming up to the contemporary, right? Yeah. Young Connie, 11-year-old Connie. Connie with her mom and dad. Yeah. You know, your s- siblings were a lot older, so it was just you three. Right. And all of a sudden, you go through 
you come up to the contemporary, you're right about to head through, and like your face just gets planted against the glass, and you're like <laughs> in amazement of this whole area that you've never seen before in your life. That's exactly. Did I get it? Exactly true. From all the way down to the face plant, like my nose was pressed against the glass. <laughs> I totally figured that you'd and be like that. My parents were like, get away from the glass. Your mom's <laughs> like getting the wipes out. There was no wipes back then. No, no Clorox it? wipes or anything. So yeah, she was panicking because yeah, I'm she's like just wiping it off on your shirt. Completely in awe. But I'm sure that's what most kids are like when they go in from the monorail for the first time seeing the contemporary. Yeah, and that's what I mean about this whole futuristic thing is like it's not – I mean, think about it. These kids have tiny computers now in the palm of their hands, right? Right. Things that I wish and dreamed of as a kid, you know, of having – Well, now they're taking virtual tours of it before we go. <laughs> that's true, right? But seriously, it's still – I still see and witness little kids in awe of – even and kids, and I'm talking adults too that have never been to Walt Disney World, still in awe till this day when they go – through the contemporary lobby there on the monorail. It really still remains such a in, immersive, such a unique experience that is unlike anything anywhere. And and we're in, you know, it's 2017. We're in a world of, you know, like I said, you can FaceTime someone from across the world, you know? And right. It's, it's still amazing. You can listen to other people talking on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that too, right? So I think it, this is why I feel like this is the most iconic resorts because it just encompasses everything disney you know everything that this the company it just they did it so well and you're right you know it's the one resort that overlooks a park and we can talk about that and how it really reflects tomorrowland and how i think we've mentioned this in other episodes before but how the ac architecture and everything really goes and ties in with to Disney uh, with Magic Kingdom's Tomorrowland. Right. And imagine being in Bay Lake Tower in your room overlooking the Magic Kingdom when the fireworks are going off. It's almost like you'll have a, your own private showing. Oh, my goodness. It is like your own private That's, show. Right? I mean, we got to experience that one day. I have to uh, tell you real quick All right. that speaking of Tomorrowland and how the architecture is very futuristic, um, there was rumors that – and there's rumors. There was rumors that originally you were supposed to be able to walk from the contemporary to right through Tomorrowland. Hmm. That would have been amazing. I know, right? I'd be staying there all the time. I mean, even yeah. now it's tempting because you can walk right from the contemporary to the Magic Kingdom. It's right. the only resort you can walk to. Yeah. Or from the only resort you can walk to the Magic Kingdom from. Right. But imagine being able to like enter. So you're telling me there was a Magic Kingdom side entrance. <laughs> yeah, basically is what I'm saying. Rumor wow, has it. that is amazing. Rumor has it. Why'd they not do that? I don't know. And, um, you know, I only scratched the surface about the rumor. But I think it would have been really, really cool. There's obviously reasons why they didn't do it. Um, sure, you know. One whatever. of the things that I like about the Contemporary is the contrast of views. So when you go, when you're in the Contemporary and you're viewing, like, the Magic Kingdom in the, you can see the Floridian or the islands and the, Polynesian and then you turn around and you go to the pool area in the back it's like so surreal and quiet there's just a lake on the lake you can see the 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 ship coming in and out dropping people off but there's really not much going on that you can see I know what you mean it's like the the lakeside uh, rooms that yeah they you describe. don't get to experience that unless you go down to the pool area they actually did describe that part of the original promotional video was that not only do you get these amazing rooms, like these futuristic looking rooms, but they also described those other, that other side as like water lakefront hotel rooms. Yeah, they, they do a great job, too, because you know Fort Wilderness is over there, but you can't see it. Oh, I know. I love that. Until you get on the boat and start heading over that way. I love that. All right. I have got to ask you a couple of trivia questions i'm ready okay because this has got to do with the history okay i'm gonna do these easy for you because they're just gonna be true or false excellent so i have a 50 percent chance of making a fool of myself 50 50 excellent let's go <laughs> okay here we go true or false disney's contemporary resort was the original proposed name false that is true excellent it's true or i'm right you're right oh, okay the good. answer is false Oh, wow, name? I just realized how confusing that was. Yeah, it was like, that is true. You like made me feel good, but I thought I was wrong. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, <laughs> do over. Back it up. Just bag it what up. What was the original proposed name? Bag it up. Just bag it up. Okay, sorry. Um, Pretty sure Rick doesn't know what that means. Uh, yeah. Okay. Tempo Bay. Hmm. I'm glad they stuck with contemporary. Me, too. Tempo I don't... Bay sounds awkward. <laughs> it doesn't sound awkward. I just, I don't know. I Tempo love... Tempo Bay? 
Tempo Bay. Yeah, it sounds pretty Tempo 80s to Bay. me. 70s. No, sounds, it sounds 80s. It sounds 80s? Yeah, I know it was supposed to in the 70s, but it sounds 80s. Okay. Tempo Bay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, okay. So I got one right. Yes, you did. True, false, true, false. Okay, here we go. True or false, once again. California Grill opened in 1971. I mean, it, it was a different restaurant, though. So. True or false? False. You're right again. I know. I know my. I know my. I know my facts. You know your facts. You've been studying, I Bruce. Know. So that is, that is all. That is false. And do you know, actually, what it was? I forget what the name was, but I know it was a different restaurant. You know? I don't know the name of it. I just oh. said I don't know. Okay. So when Disney's Contemporary Resort opened in 1971, the 15th floor was known as the Top of the World Restaurant. Hmm. Wasn't the Tempo Cafe? It was not the Tempo Cafe, oh. and it actually looks a lot different than nowadays. And it's very, it's very seventies red, deep red color. Very, I would say like Brady Bunch kind of vibe <laughs> going on, like groovy. Actually, groovy is is how they describe the contemporary decor. They said groovy. They actually said groovy. Wow. As a description, they probably tried to delete that from the internet histories. Yeah. Um. So. And there is actually, if you go to DisneyParks.com blog and it's the Vintage Disney World, you can see the um, menu from 1971. But before I read the menu offerings, I got to tell you, in June of 1981, it was the, bro- the quote, Broadway at the Top dinner show debuted at the restaurant and ran until September of 1993. No, I never got to see it, but super, super cool. That'd be cool to actually see a show at the top of the contemporary i know i like how all right we can go into the food and contemporary but i know we've talked about in other shows i love the open feeling i love the refurbishment they did and i love being able to have that open concept with unobstructed views but i think i would i don't know would you rather i think i would rather have a dinner show there i don't think so although you know when they pipe in the music like how would that work i don't think i would want to have a dinner show only because the view's so good. The view, the, the view is good. It may distract you from what's going on when the fireworks go off. But yeah. I think the, the the way that it's set up now with the California Grill, you go back a lot. What do you mean? Like, how often would you go back and see the same dinner show? Oh, well, I'm sure they would change it up, no? Well, they didn't for that. How many years was it no, going? No, there was a lot of people. There was, like, a lot of famous people coming in and out. What were they doing? They were performing. Like, singing? Y- yeah. Now I'll take the California Grill. <laughs> Um, some of the some of the menu offerings um, of the top of of the world restaurant included liver pate, lobster bisque. Um, that sounds good. Yeah, orange glazed roast Long Island duckling, supreme of chicken rosini. Lots of lots of. That sounds like it could be on the in, uh, menu today. Right, I know. Lots of lots of delicious offerings and yummy. Yummy things. I know that they just, I know that they recently, not recently, but a few years back, redid it to the California Grill. But I like the California Grill. I have to say it's one of my, I don't, I don't know if it's one of my favorite restaurants, but if you had to say which one of your favorite high-end restaurants, it's definitely the California Grill. That confused me. I so think, it is or is not one of your favorite Well, to me, like, I like the Liberty Tree Tavern, which isn't t- technically a high-end oh, restaurant. Right. You know, yeah. I, I like more casual places, but okay. the California Grill is one of those restaurants where you walk in and you almost, in the beginning, feel like... I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> and then you realize that, you know what? It's Disney. Everybody's yeah. supposed to be there. Yeah. It makes you feel comfortable, even though it's a little bit, you know, high class. It is hi- It is high class, for sure. Like, you, you, just the whole experience of checking in, you have to check in, and then they take you in an elevator to the resort, uh, sorry, to the restaurant. It's that process as well that makes it feel just a little bit more extravagant. Yeah, it makes you feel like you're going to see the boss and you're in trouble. <laughs> you're like taking the elevator up to the top floor. Like, oh no, what I do now? I never really thought of it that way, but yeah, okay. And then while you wait, obviously you can go out onto the balconies, and what a view from those balconies! It is an incredible view. Now, what do you? What is? Well, what's your favorite menu offering? I, you don't have to name specific foods at the California Grill, but for me, his, this, this is the tricky part. I don't. I love the sushi. A California Grill, but I never know if I should order the sushi at the California Grill or when we visit the Polynesian and we go to the Kona. So, do you prefer like their 
dishes, like their high end dishes, or yeah. would you prefer like because they are famous for their sushi? I think I when I go there, I prefer the the, the dishes, not the sushi. Maybe get a sushi as an appetizer, but not for the main course. Gotcha. What about yourself? <sighs> it's a toss up. It's either like meat or fish for me, and not yeah. f- fish cooked. I mean, not sushi. No, I know. I I like the sushi here a lot. I don't know if I like it better at Kona or, or vice versa, but I think the atmosphere at the Contemporary kicks it up, obviously, a notch, and I think it tastes better for that reason. I don't know if I agree with you. Okay. You know what? And that's not – I know I know. I say that often. Yeah. Well, but I think you can get good sushi at the Kona Cafe. And when you're at the C- California, the sushi that you get is, like, good, but it's, I feel like it's more of a high-end steak fish kind of place, and that's what you should be getting. Well, I want to tell you that something new that's – well, not brand new, but something newer – since probably the last time you visited California Grill, you can now enjoy brunch at the top. Really? Indulge in a leisurely Sunday. Is it all you care to enjoy? Featuring sophisticated fare and sweeping views of Magic Kingdom Park, relax with the backdrop of live musical entertainment while sipping on complimentary mimosas throughout the brunch. You can even interact with Disney chefs as they artfully prepare dishes in the open show kitchen. Hmm. California Grill is one of my favorite places. They also have the Wave. The Wave is pretty. I think an underrated place. But Do you cool. think so? Yeah, cool atmosphere. Underrated in the sense of like, I always feel. Well, I always, I always seem to be able to obtain a reservation. There's so, never a time where I can't. Yeah, I think the California Grill is very well known. California Grill, you've got to book early. And you should book early because it's good. <laughs> yeah. But the Wave is like you said, an underrated place that you can go visit, and it's got a cool vibe in there as well. I'm conf- I wonder what how they come up with the names of these places for the contemporary resort. You know, what's really interesting is that researching history and really um, just trying to understand the concept of contemporary resort, my first thoughts were, yes, it's this futuristic place. When you go into the resort rooms, the, the architecture in there and the decor is very sleek and modern, which exudes future in my opinion but everywhere else it kind of has that southwestern sort of flair yeah that's that's unusual like it it feels like it goes together but it doesn't feel like it should go together exactly so it's that's why they do that we don't say that again that's why they do that and we don't and we don't yeah that's why they leave i would never think to put those two together i know we can go on and on about the food there's obviously chef mickey's there's so many so many places here to eat uh obviously you guys know how much we love the couches at the contemporary. Yeah, I mean that's the couches, the railings, and the escalators are always fun. All this is if you're super a young fun. kid, <laughs> you love those escalators. Super cool. But let's talk about the exterior and the pools. I feel like at first glance, they don't seem like anything special. No, definitely not. It, it very it feels very I don't want to say bland, but kind of bland outside. But as you sit by the pool and walk around it and hang out there a little bit more, and you go over to the dock, you realize that. It's very relaxing out there. You're like, I don't want to say bland, but it's very bland. Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to sound harsh, but you know what? Sometimes that's how I feel in the beginning. Um. Yeah, I agree. I think that one of the things when you go to a Walt Disney World resort, especially a deluxe category, you want to be wowed by everything. And when you go out to this pool area, it's hum- it's huge, humongous, humongous, right? It is. But it doesn't have that wow factor. It's kind of set over to the side, too. So if you're not, like, yeah. hanging out by the pool, you probably won't go over it to it. Mm-hmm. You're going to either walk to the dock or you're walking from uh, up the stairs or over to where they have the movie or Bay Lake Towers. You don't necessarily go to that pool area, but you got to go inside the pool area and really go into the gate. If you got to wait for somebody to come out so you can Bruce, go oh my, in. Oh, my god! I didn't say go in swimming, but just walk around it and see what it's like and view it to get a feel for it. I think you'll get a, you'll appreciate it much more after that. I just wanted to say don't judge a book by its cover because you're so right. Once you enter the pool area, it's it's amazing how luxurious it is and that feeling of a Disney deluxe category resort you get after after the fact. And I specifically love what my favorite thing is, it's that hot tub area right in the middle of it all. I know. If I was staying there, <laughs> I would jump in that. But if I you wasn't. were staying in there, wink, wink. No, it must be frustrating to be a lifeguard, though, there because they have to keep telling the kids not to touch the – the sprinklers that come up. The fountain. Yeah, fountain. Everybody wants to climb on that. Or sit on it. Like, or sit kids on love it. sitting on that. No, but I, I know. I was like, oh, bummer. You can't. Like, that's we were there for like 10 minutes looking at it, and I guess the, the lifeguard had to say it at least 14 times in that 10 <laughs> minutes. 
<laughs> poor lifeguard. I know. Really, the vantage point of the pool area and that just that area right down there, especially where like they have they play the movie and everything, that lawn. If you just look up, you realize the scale of this resort and it how almost amazing. makes you like if you're afraid of heights like me, it almost makes you feel a little wheezy. Your knees get a little shaky. <laughs> yes. And to turn around and see the lake and it's just so quiet out there. It feels like there's nothing around you. It is amazing. Like I think you mentioned before, but in the beginning, it, there's just a lot going on. And then all of a sudden, it's just so serene and peaceful. Yes. And they do a cri- – and I think this is what makes Deluxe Category Resort so incredibly special. You know, if you can if you can somehow find it in the way to afford it in your budget, it, it to me anyway, it makes you have this incredibly luxurious Disney vacation. It's possible. And – you're there in Disney. You're probably there for your kids or, you know, your kid at heart. But you still want to feel luxurious or relaxed. And I think they do it seamlessly. I think the contemporary does a good job from our short visits there, making adults feel comfortable. And it's not just all about the kids. And it's not white glove like the Grand Floridian. Is yeah, like you want to you be able to go there. And like the Grand Floridian is great for adults, but I feel very much out of place. <laughs> you do. You always say that. <laughs> and the contemporary has that same feel without me feeling like I shouldn't be there. Totally. It's almost like this is the adult resort, but it's comfortable for kids too. It is comfortable for kids too. The only, what do you, not, not to throw any negativity here, but with Bay Lake constructed not too long ago, um, what do you feel about the architecture of Bay Lake and its, its, its reflection of the actual contemporary resort? Well, it's obviously different. I think they did the Bay Lake Tower like that for what it offers, views of the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. And I think that's why they did it like that. Mm -hmm. Um, For the Vacation Club members, they get, I mean, it's an amazing view. So if you're staying in the room, it's awesome, right? Right. But if you're not staying in the room, it doesn't kind of go with the main building of the Contemporary, but neither does those little buildings in the back. You're talking about, oh, yeah, the the Lakeview resort areas, uh, Lakeview rooms, rather. Yeah, you know, I kind of have to say, so uh, first of all, So many of our friends and family members love Bay Lake Towers. They have such an incredible, immersive experience staying there. The thing in the kid in me, in the vintage Connie, or nostalgic Connie, when I see it, I'm like, oh, I feel like it kind of takes away from the cool architecture of the contemporary. You want to stay in the main building. That's what you're saying. Well, I always want to stay at the contemporary, but I think it also, like the view, it kind of takes away from the... It is set back a little bit, though. Like, we often go out on the balcony and watch the... And if you go out on the balcony on the main lobby, there's chairs out there that you can either view the fireworks or just kind of take a break and sit there and watch the monorail loop around. And it is set back a little bit. So if you're focused on the Magic Kingdom that way, you don't notice it as much. That's true. Good point, Bruce. Good sell. (laughs) Yeah, I I sold you on that. You sold me on that. Well, I think we did a, a lot of little history and talking about what it's like to stay there and visit there now. Don't yeah, you think? I think, you know, it make, it, this for sure made me want to go stay there. <laughs> it did for sure, right? Yes. Well, that was a good episode. Hopefully you learned some things about the Contemporary Resort. It made you want to stay there because it sure made me want to stay there. I just want to say thank you to Enchanted Escape Travel. If you're looking to go to your Contemporary Resort because of the show, <laughs> go check out Enchanted-Escapes.com, their website. Enchanted Escapes will help you book your Disney resort vacation, your fast passes, all of that stuff. Whether you're going to Disneyland, Disney World, Disney Cruise, anything Disney related, Enchanted Escapes will help you do that. And it's pretty simple. They do everything for you. They, they're very communicative with us, at least. And it's been a very good process. And I highly recommend you go check them out. Enchanted-escapes.com. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. I think it was a fun episode. I didn't want I thought it was a good balance because, like I said, I feel like a lot of times – People decide on a resort or, or, you know, it's probably hard from from home to look into resorts on the website and really not, you know, you kind of really don't know what to expect when you're yeah, there. Yeah, I, I want to do a little bit of mixture of what's there currently, which obviously was going to change tomorrow because we talked about <laughs> it today. Right. And bringing up a little bit of the past because like we mentioned in the beginning, at least I mentioned in the beginning, when I do research for these and Connie talks about the history of it, it makes me have a different look at the resort or whatever it is we're going to. When you do research about you know, the people behind it or the reasoning behind it or what the story is behind it. It makes you have a much better appreciation for what it is. Exactly. And the contemporary resort to me always was iconic. But when you look at how it was built and the history behind it and who was involved and why, it makes you walk into that Grand Canyon concourse and be like, you know what, instead of wondering why it's called that, 
She's going to appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. Bruce, you're on your game tonight. Thanks. <laughs> your A game. Yeah, so go check us out on Facebook, too. We do a live show on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, Facebook.com, and then you can just search Unlocking the Magic. On Twitter, we are WW Unlock Magic, and on Instagram as well. They have two-person Instagram Live now, Connie. What? So maybe we should be on two different devices, and then we can be on top of and bottom oh, rather gosh. than side to side. Oh, I uh, forget that actually. Oh my god! Just go to Facebook. <laughs> We're having difficulty with that, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> if you want to see the show notes for this episode, everything Connie talked about, we'll link up in the show notes. Uh, so if you're listening to this in your car or working, we'll take all the notes for you and we'll link them up on the website, unlockingthemagic.com. Uh, just search contemporary in there, and we'll be able to point you in the right direction for that blog post. Cool. All right, thank you guys. Have a great week. We'll see you Monday night.